That's uh, Jill and Rose. All right, Mayor, Commissioners, this is our annual uh, update on our Dayton survey. Uh, Dayton, as some of you know, has been surveying residents for over 30 years. The survey is aligned with national surveying practices. For the second year in a row, the city has worked with ETC Institute to administer survey to residents. The survey was conducted from September 23 to November 23, uh, mailed to approximately 13,000 randomly selected households, and we received uh, 1,315 responses. The 2023 Dayton survey presents a picture of improvement in overall resident satisfaction and confidence in the direction Dayton is moving. Almost 63% of residents indicated they're very satisfied or satisfied with Dayton as a place to live. This represents a six year high for the survey surpassing 2022's peak. The areas uh, of most important to residents, including conditions of streets, pavement and sidewalks, enforcement of city codes and ordinances and public safety have remained the same in 2023. Uh, today, as, as usual, we will not have time to review every question in the survey, but we will highlight specific city services in, my si in the My Sidewalk dashboard and show you the survey results geographically. And then following this work session, you'll receive a link uh, for you to spend time digging into your areas of interest. All right. So without any further comments from me, I'm going to turn it over to Jeanette. Manager, um, I hate to do this, but I'm going to turn this right back over to Robert. So Robert is our point of contact with each of you, and he's kind of helped us get through this process in 2023. So he's going to take a lead with the presentation, and then we'll dive into the next question. Good afternoon, Mr. Mayor, Commissioners. It's a pleasure to be here to represent ETC Institute. My name is Robert Haycock. I'm a senior project manager. And uh, I just want to, before we start, really compliment your staff. Uh, fantastic in terms of willingness to work and really caring. I can tell that they care about their jobs. They care about adequately and accurately representing what the public think. I mean, that's, after all, that's what we're really about. Really quick, this is an outline of the agenda. We're going to follow. I'm not going to touch on those, but we're going to see. I'm going to be brief. Uh, a little bit of background about ETC Institute. We've been around since 1982, really focused on community surveys and benchmarks in the late 1990s. But we've surveyed over 3 million people in the last 10 years in all 50 states. So we're well represented and, and respected in the industry. In addition to community mm -hmm. surveys, we also do transportation surveys, business surveys, uh, the equity inclusion, belonging surveys, and employee surveys. Purpose is really twofold. One is to objectively assess resident satisfaction with delivery and city services. You never input about priorities in the city. And the other is to be able to look at things over time to see are you moving the needle? How are we progressing um, on certain key issues that are important to the city? Just a little bit about the city manager already touched on a little bit the methodology, so I won't um, go over all of that, but you can see geographically here we try very hard to make sure that it's representative. The, the responses are representative of the community, both demographically and um, ge geographically. We had, and I won't draw your attention to the last point there, at a margin of error or plus or minus 2.7% at the what they call the 95% level of confidence. That is a very, very slim margin. Most of our surveys would probably be about 5%. When you hear about national surveys being conducted most of the time, they're going to say a plus or minus 5%. When we, next slide, when we um, start looking at the, the survey results, I'm going to go back one. I wanted to say a, a few things before I jump into that. One is, if you see some changes, they're going to be probably minor changes, but if you see some areas going down, uh, I want you to understand that that is almost universal these days. This last year and a half, almost all of our clients have seen some degradation in the satisfaction of, of residents. Not saying why that we really can pinpoint why, but but it's a national trend to see some of those uh, results going down. <clears throat> I also would remind you of the margin of error. When you see a change, 
if it's not greater than 2.72%, it's really not statistically significant. So something can go up 1%, down 1%. That's within the margin of error and probably really not something that you need to uh, spend a lot of time being concerned about. Uh, we also want to point out that I work with a lot of clients all over the country. And one of the, the mistakes, I guess I would call it, is that when we look at numbers, and we can go to the next slide, we look at a slide like this of 42% of the residents uh, believe that the city is generally headed in the right direction. Well, somebody might look at that and conclude, well, that means that 58% think we're going in the wrong direction. But those folks don't understand the whole question. And part of the question was, in that particular case, they had the option of choosing don't know. In other cases, they can choose neutral. So you can have a scale of very satisfied, somewhat satisfied, neutral, somewhat dissatisfied, and very dissatisfied. So in that case, when you look at 42%, think you're generally headed in the right direction. 36% said don't know. So really, now I'm going to I'm going to hit that that point. When you're looking at these and how to move the needle, I would focus on those areas and really try to understand the the nature of the of why somebody would take a survey only to say I'm neutral. Uh, I have an opinion. I want to I want to give it to you, but then I don't give it to you. Why Why do they do that? Well, most commonly, it's a lack of information. It's more communication, more information to the public, the better. But sometimes you need to understand there's just a, a lag between action and and perception. <laughs> this is very frequent in in uh, public works cases where you will see uh, an all out effort by a community to really fix the streets. They're doing everything right. They're telling people ahead of time what they're going to do. They're bragging about the success afterwards of doing it. Still takes time to move that needle. So be cautious. Be be um, understanding that something takes <clears throat> time. Uh, the perception of the city here: sixty three percent of the residents are satisfied with the city as a place to live. Twenty percent were neutral. So again, on all of these last three, two, three, and four, you had a range of twenty to twenty eight percent that said they were neutral. I would suggest it's much easier to move those people to a satisfied than it is to try to take somebody who's in the dissatisfied and move them up. What actually happens if you move folks that are in the neutral category to satisfied, the negative people don't have as many people to listen to them when they're when they're talking about their negative views of things. So that's that's really a, you know just my perception moving forward. This, next slide is perception of neighborhoods. And again, I just let you kind of look at all these, but I think that they're talking about more than half of the residents are satisfied with their neighborhood overall. That's very positive. All of these really are positive. Even when you think of 21% of the residents think the appearance of the neighborhood is getting better, the, the needle is being moved, whether that's by conscious actions by the city or if it's other things happening in the community. Uh, but those are very positive. Well, this, how many people said that resident, residents think that the appearance of their neighborhood is getting worse? Just, I'm just. Well, I don't know that we framed it, that particular question that way. We said, one second, I got a lot of them. <laughs> we did say getting better, getting worse, or staying the same. Those were the two questions. Mm -hmm. So those that said it was getting worse, people didn't move okay. into the getting worse. They moved into the staying the same. Okay. Yeah. Good question. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Seventy-eight percent of residents feel safe in their neighborhood alone during the day. Fifty-two percent feel safe or alone at night, and thirty-six percent of the residents feel safe in downtown. I know that Jeanette's going to cover more information about downtown yeah. a little bit here in the dashboard. We did want to tell you there were a few new sur survey questions this year. We had about the same number, but we added some new ones. Seventy-nine, almost eighty percent of residents think that the use of intelligence gathering technology. <laughs> or uh, public safety is appropriate. 30% of residents are satisfied with these efforts to address environmental sustainability issues. 71% agree that environmental sustainability issues are important areas for the city to address. And then finally, residents said the primary reason for their air travel within the past 12 months was 38% travel for vacation, 10% travel for business, and 46% reported not using air travel. Now keep in mind, that was a survey of residents so typically, if a resident is going something that might be different than a business traveler coming here, uh, my understanding is that your airport folks are thinking about having a, a separate survey that they're going to uh, commission to um, 
to kind of gauge more what, what about the users that come to this. And with that, time to turn it over to Jeanette. She's yes. going to walk through the dashboard results. Okay. As the manager mentioned, I will hop around, not going to everything, but I will highlight a few areas from some of the results, and it will be available um, tomorrow. We can publish it and post the link out on the website. Um, so, same exact format as previous years. You have all of the um, the high level questions on the left hand side to dig into. I'm going to start with date best place to live. It takes a second to load. Um, but this was that 63% that we mentioned was being satisfied. Um, and as we mentioned, this is, if I go down to the trend, this is our new high in terms of satisfaction, which this is what you want to see. Dissatisfaction is dropping. So this is a really good thing. So more people are actually picking a satisfied response, either very satisfied or satisfied. Um, looking at the map, when we go down to the map, Satisfaction is strongest downtown. This was the same last year. Satisfaction was highest downtown. I think downtown last year was this high water mark for satisfaction. And you're going to see this in the survey where it's kind of gone down a little bit in some areas. Not that it's a bad thing. It's just that depending upon the pool of people who have responded last year, they might have said like 80% now instead of 74%. But 74% is incredibly high in terms of satisfaction. But you can see in the West neighborhoods, North Central is what we're calling this city use council. It is lower, so it's just under 60% satisfaction, but still over half, almost 60% satisfaction. So that's, that's pretty good. <clears throat> um, on the demographic side, so one of the things that's interesting in terms of tenure, so however long um, someone has lived in dating. So you can kind of see this like on the bell ends of this. Residents who have lived here for less than 10 years are more satisfied, and then those who have lived here for more than 30 years reported being less, more satisfied. Um, so it's kind of interesting that the opposite ends of this, on opposite sides of tenure, um, express more satisfaction. And to the value of services and programs. So this is the question related to our taxes. How satisfied are you with um, the value that one receives in relation to the taxes paid? Um, so it is almost in line with last year. It's about the same. Um, it's about 30, almost 40% that said that they are satisfied. If you look at the neutral, there are a lot of people in this neutral area. So just under 30% are in your neutral. And then dissatisfaction is not super, super low, but dissatisfaction isn't high in terms of results. Um, if we look at the mapping, and I will point out, we have asked this question in previous survey cycles back to like 2017, but we reformatted the question slightly. So if you go back to old dashboards, you'll probably see this question in there, but the response options were slightly different. It was reformatted to make it a little bit clearer and easier for people who took the surveys to understand. So really 2022 is kind of our new benchmark, but we have data from the previous years, if ever anyone wanted to look back. Um, in terms of the map, Again, you'll kind of see downtown highest level of satisfaction in terms of value for taxes paid. And then West Dayton is actually the lowest, so that is 36%. Um, so you can kind of see that divide. It's almost 10 percentage points different in terms of downtown being the high and then West, West Dayton residents. Um, for the demographics, so if you look at it by race, you will see kind of a significant um, difference in terms of white residents express more satisfaction in terms of feeling an overall value based on taxes paid. I'll jump to quality of life. So this is in terms of satisfaction with your overall quality of life and dating. So over 50%. It's almost exactly the same as last year. It's about in line with last year's as well, the 53%. So not a whole lot of change there. The one thing I do want to point out is dissatisfaction is actually pretty low. It's less than 20%. So dissatisfaction is pretty low, and it is about the same. It is darn near close to what was reported last year. So dissatisfaction hasn't actually gone up. People are reporting about the same level of satisfaction as they were last year. Um, in terms of demographics, um, kind of interesting, but 
black residents and white residents have higher levels of satisfaction, um, a little bit higher for white residents in terms of the survey. And then in terms of tenure, it is higher for those who have lived here less than 20 years. Okay, and then I'm gonna go to Real quick, <laughs> I mean, I'm going to go to the direction. So this is um, this is that question. Do you think Dayton is heading in the right direction? Um, yes or no, or you know, or they don't know. So you can see how many people landed in this don't know section. Um, so few people said no. So actually, if you look at the trend, I'm going to go down to this. Um, the no's actually went down ever so slightly. I wouldn't say this is a super significant amount, but you can see the no's aren't going up. Um, as you can see, the yes oh, went down. down, but more people went into that don't know. It's kind of a general theme. You'll probably see people are in that neutral, I don't know, kind of apathetic response. You'll see that a little bit throughout the survey. Um, in terms of demographics, so um, what's one of the things that's interesting is black residents actually reported less. So this is the yes response. So fewer black residents said yes, Dayton's going in the right direction. Um, we had more Hispanic, uh, Hispanic or Latino and white residents who said yes, Dayton is going in the right direction. And then in terms of tenure, so which is this is. Interesting. So residents who have lived here less than 10 years had the highest um, response in terms of, yes, Dayton's going in the right direction. Could be correlated to younger residents. We have to do a little bit more digging into that, but that was a pretty interesting problem. If I might add to that, it stands to reason that folks that are wanting to move here or have moved here recently are finding value. The question is, what are they finding value in and how do we make that spread to everyone else who's already here but they presumably most of those had a choice of where they want to live and they chose to move today okay so that's the this um area new ish <laughs> we added this question last year um so this was really a way for us to capture some kind of responses based on a of citizens write in responses. So every year we leave a question at the end that says, just give us your overall opinion, provide feedback on anything. And so we did some kind of keyword searches looking for themes and these, I think there's about 15 options are areas that were repeated in the comments. So these were writing comments from prior year surveys essentially. So this is a two part question. We asked number one, yes or no, is this an important issue? And then on the flip side too, how well, so these three sections, how well do you think the, the issue is currently being addressed? I will say these are ranked by importance, so highest importance is at the top. This ranking is almost exactly the same as last year. The only thing that got swapped is drug use and street and sidewalks swapped ever so slightly. <laughs> but it is almost exactly the same in, in terms of importance. So it's this is just an important piece in terms of looking at what residents find important and then in terms of how they gauge, especially I'm sure people's eyes go right to the poor. Do you think it's poorly being addressed? Um, and so it's just a good visual of even if we don't have a direct impact into some of this stuff, what residents find important that we may not have a question on the survey because sometimes we don't always have questions that fit. But the exact same. The exact same. Okay, I'm going to hop over to our next section. And these are bucketed, I will say, by our community service areas. So we tried our best to align these. It should align like our performance management and budget process align. So rec service areas should align with these results in the survey. And the first one I want to talk through, and we talked through this a little bit last year, um, recreation. So I'm going to scroll down, but let <laughs> me explain. Um, so recreation, we added some questions back in after COVID. Basically, since the centers were closed, the questions for recreation services kind of came off. They got added back in. Um, and one of the questions is, how satisfied are you with recreation youth programming? So you will see this, and it looks like only 20% said they're satisfied. But what I want to point out is how many people ended up in your don't knows. So 
I know we've had discussions in the past of what the don't knows mean, and truly, I mean, that's kind of a interpretation, but somebody literally said they don't know or don't have experience with these recreation use services experiences. And what I want to point out is dissatisfaction is not super high. And I just saw, which is awesome that they put up the board, recreation um, did a survey actually last year. So one of the things when we meet with departments, if we can't put enough questions on the survey to fit your needs, and recreation I'm sure is one of those, they often do their own surveys. Recreation did their survey as part of their strategic planning process, which hopefully you saw that board out there. Um, so this is one of the areas where this might not give recreation a lot of information. So they did their own digging and got their own information on what their customer base wants, needs, what improvements they can make. So it's not all bad information. It's just, you know, another point for them to dig. But it is telling, you know, a lot of people who take the survey, very few have children even. So I think this is just telling the pool of people who respond might not have children. We talk about this one almost every year. Um, so this is asking residents um, if they are in agreement with the statement that they would they would be supportive if an immigrant moved next to them, next door to them. So you will see in the results, yes, those who said strongly agree or agree did go down. But I want to hop down to the trend. Um, like Robert was saying, the percentage point differences, yes, it went down and it does look like it's starting a trend, but I'm sure next year we'll be telling to see if it's a true, true trend of this consistent decline. But you can see that it peaked at 70% in 2021. So this is actually, if you look at the 56, 57% that the result was in 2023, it's back in line with our kind of pre-COVID results. Um, I will say, I will point out though, those in disagreement actually has gone up. So this is one area we'll want to keep an eye on, um, especially over the coming years, to see if that trend sticks um, and just see if this is truly something where this agreement is going up in terms of agreement. This is like that cohesion question a little bit. And then sort of like Matthew things we have a bit of a change. So we do show in the survey change in terms of geography. So you will see in terms of levels of disagreement going down or up, they went down the most for residents in Southeast. Fox <laughs> News effect right there. <laughs> Fox <laughs> News. That's um, hilarious. But you can kind of, it, it didn't go down. It means outlying <laughs> neighborhoods outside of downtown. A little bit. Well, they did all go down. Monday. Downtown. Downtown went up. So this is one we'll want to keep our eye on. I think it's important to note that I think what Jeanette's alluding to is don't read too much into one dot or one moment. All of these are a picture in time, and that's really what they are. It takes work and analysis and future effort to kind of really understand the patterns. And so we always caution folks, as she's saying, be careful not to overreact to, to one one number of, of the, until you really see a pattern that you can uh, have confidence that you're addressing. So I shouldn't tell the city manager we need to double our <laughs> funding. <laughs> <laughs> I said not. I said should. 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 <laughs> okay. I'm gonna hop down to the question about uh, how satisfied are residents with the um, support for minority and women-owned businesses in um, Dayton. Um, so this one. So first glance, it looks like just over a third. So about 38 percent said they're satisfied. Um, what I want to point out is there's almost a third just under 30% that are in your neutral. And even more telling, the dissatisfaction is low, just super, super low. So despite what you see in the header, not a bad news story <laughs> at all. This could just be lack of experience or truly people are, I mean, they are responding neutrally. But um, the satisfaction is very low, which is a good sign. It's like less than 9%. 
Um, in terms of demographics, just quickly. Um, race, you will see um, satisfaction is lower for black residents. Um, but satisfaction with Hispanic residents went up a little bit and it's, it, it is higher for your white residents in Dayton. Um, but this is a little telling or insightful and we can get into the point. Black residents are a little less satisfied with the support for minority and women on businesses. And then, so satisfaction with one's neighborhood overall. Um, so again, over 50%, it has gone down and ever so slightly about three percentage points from last year. Not a huge decline, um, especially when you look at the trend. The March fair. Yes, and the market fair, thank you. Um, but when we look at the trend, you can see it, it did kind of start to eek up over 2021, 2022, but this is still higher than the pre-pandemic response. So not a trend yet. This is another one to keep an eye, but satisfaction is still really high. Over 50% said that they're satisfied with their own neighborhood. And then dissatisfaction, it has barely changed. <laughs> barely changed from last year. And it's even gone down from when it a little bit higher in prior years. So this is a good news, good news thing. And we'll we'll keep an eye just to make sure that trend doesn't, doesn't decline. Um, so in terms of mapping. So I want to point out that so downtown residents are more satisfied at 64%. And you can see satisfaction higher in eastern neighborhoods and lower in your west and northern neighborhoods. And then the change. So as I mentioned earlier, last year was kind of like this high watermark for like responses from downtown residents. They were highly, highly satisfied. Great responses. So you can see. It dropped 19 percentage points. We don't know the rhyme or reason, but last year there was 84 percent of downtown residents that they were satisfied or very satisfied. That's super high, <laughs> super super high. So not knowing exactly what this leads into, we don't have a trend yet. We don't know what the reason is. We should keep an eye on this, but that's the reason why you're seeing that it's driving that year over year change. We had like this high high water mark in terms of responses last year. Do we have like? demographic information and whether that's changed in downtown like on responses for this yeah because i could imagine if you got a subset last year that was over sampling people who had a higher income and then this year we got a sampling of folks who had a lower income that could sway and we could i mean we have it in the data i have to admit we haven't looked at it deeply into like the cross tabbing but um I think one of the things once you start diving into the data, once you get into like smaller neighborhoods, like you know, 1,300 responses, right. it's like a small subset. It's always going to change. But we could look into like big variances year over year. There are big variances. But we got a, we got a big variance there, right? Nineteen yeah. percent. Yes. So we can we get a little deeper. I think it would probably be. It's also important to note that the last, you know, 18 months have been really tough downtown, mm -hmm. right? With the vacancy of downtown from workers and all of the activity that's been going on in downtown, you know, because we lose so much of our statistical significance and you're talking about sample sizes of 10 or 15 comparatively, it's probably a lot more to do with the climate that's been in downtown that we, yeah, all of us have been wrestling with, um, so. We have some solid workers in the big And then quick, quick highlight on demographics, just income because we haven't touched on that really yet. <clears throat> Which should probably be no surprise. The satisfaction with one neighborhood is fairly lower, a degree lower for those residents who make less than, and this is household income. So reported household income if it's less than $25,000. So it is lower for those residents. And then the last one in this session, affordability of housing options. So not a whole lot of change from last year, but just about 33% reported that they were satisfied or very satisfied with the affordable housing options in Dayton. And so looking at the responses, the breakdown, you can see almost 30% ended up in that neutral section again. 
So it's almost like a third and a third and a third. So third are satisfied, third are neutral, and kind of close, not quite, but getting to a third almost-ish, 27% are dissatisfied. <laughs> And then in terms of trends, which we just added this question. This is one we will definitely want to keep an eye on as we go on. Um, we added this question in 2022. We did not have this question before. Um, but you can see actually not a whole lot of change year to year. The stats actually did go down, but I wouldn't call this a trend or anything yet. Um, but not a whole lot of change. Responses are basically the same. Um, in terms of mapping, you can kind of see Residents in West Dayton have lower satisfaction. Um, so you can see the difference in terms of north and east and downtown residents in terms of responses. What was that number for downtown here? Almost um, And then demographic wise, race, it is satisfaction is lower for minority residents in Dayton. Let's move over to justice. All right, the so satisfaction with the quality of police services, it is almost exactly the same as last year. So just under 60% reported that they are satisfied or very satisfied. And I want to point out, this satisfaction is actually pretty low. Um, it's around 15, well, it's just under 15% dissatisfaction. Um, so you can see the majority of people kind of ended up in that satisfied range um, and very satisfied. So this is good news. And if we look at the trend, so you can kind of see a little ebbs and flows over time. It is, it is going up ever so slowly, but it hasn't changed a whole lot. It's not super drastic. Um, and the other thing is dissatisfaction has remained relatively stable. It has not gone up a whole lot. It is in that 15-ish percent range, a little bit, not a whole lot in 2021, but it's back into that kind of percentage areas. Um, in terms of mapping, so satisfaction is higher in East neighborhoods, slightly higher downtown, and then satisfaction is lower and Western. It's slightly lower. It's still over that 50% mark. Not, not too, too much lower. Um, and then in terms of year over year, just looking at the change. Um, you can see again, kind of alluding to some of what Shelley was bringing up, the decline was driven downtown um, and then kind of interest Interesting. Um, satisfaction went up a little bit for West End residents and Southeast. They almost grew by the same amount. Um, not a whole lot of change, very little change. It did go down by 3%. But you can kind of see this theme <laughs> with downtown in terms of changes from last year. Okay. Okay, so this one did go up six percentage points. Um, so satisfaction with uh, the professionalism of police officers went up to almost 60 percent, so it's just under 60 percent. And then I have to highlight the satisfaction is really low. Um, one of the things I want to bring up when we we show the directors the results, so police actually um, took it upon yeah. themselves to do an additional kind of touch point with um, interact people are interacting with. So they actually do their own survey. So these are like po post contact surveys that occur. And I will say in terms of responses there, they kind of align with this. People mostly, for the most part, I think is over 70% of people who have direct contact with a police officer and receive a survey find their interactions are positive. So this is one of those areas too where when we met with directors, this might not be giving them all the information they need. So they went out and are doing their own survey. They're directly surveying the people that they interact with um, every day. So it's it's good information. They get other feedback that we can't give them. So it's it's a good touch point. But this is a good news story. Um, in terms of the mapping, I will just point out the year over year because of that change. 
Um, it's red, but ignore the color. <laughs> it went up if you look at the percentage in every area of the city. Huh. So that was really driving that percentage point, especially this 13, almost 14 percentage point increase in terms of satisfaction in Southeast. And then demographics, just on the flip side a little bit, Black residents did report lower levels of satisfaction with this professionalism. It's still over that 50% mark, but it is lower than the responses. And then I will highlight police responsibility. So they are responses in terms of um, someone agreeing with the fact that police officers and dating are held accountable for their actions. It is almost the same. It's basically just 43% slight increase from 2022, not a whole lot of change. And so we'll see. This is one of those newer, new ish questions that we added. So this question got added in 2021. So responses are relatively stable. They have not changed a whole lot in terms of those who agree. We are seeing a slight, slight start to start bend down in terms of disagreement, which is good. So this is one to look for if that trend continues in terms of disagreement um, going on. And then consistency of laws in, in terms of how they're enforced, regardless of someone's race or ethnicity. So about 37 percent of residents agree that laws are consistently enforced. So you'll see almost 26 percent landed up in that in a neutral spot. Um, and then it's also telling too. We have almost 70 percent of them. Um, there are about 120 percent who disagree. Yes, laws are not consistently enforced. But you'll see there are quite a few people in the neutral and no no options. So So agreement. So levels of agreement that laws are consistently enforced is it, higher in terms of downtown east, lower north central west. And then mapping on some demographics, it is lower. Black residents have less agreement. So they agree less that laws are consistent in short and age. Younger residents. So younger residents under 40 have lower levels of agreement as well. And then I'm not going to talk us through too much. I just want to show it since we added this question. Um, just to talk through. So the question we added about intelligence gathering technology. So you can see this was the actual question. There were some examples provided of what that meant. Um, so in terms of how the spread, I'm just gonna highlight this. So the appropriateness here, that's getting us to that like 79%. And then you can see the inappropriateness is pretty low, just at 50%. So in terms of responses, this was. Is there a question that asked citizens if they're concerned about their pri privacy issues related? We did not. Is no. there a question that could be asked? We could, and this was added last year just as a gap, we realized it was a gap in the survey, so we can absolutely. I think that'd be helpful. Mm -hmm. I don't hear people express concerns around the technology itself. They raise concerns about the safeguards around privacy. All right, try to keep us on time. The building. Okay, satisfaction with fire and EMS services. So I think you hear this every year, <laughs> but residents are really satisfied with fire and EMS services. Um, it is gonna look like it went down a little bit. This is not a huge, huge drop. There are more residents who ended up in your don't know. It's in the margin of error. It's within the margin of error. <laughs> but I think it's just dependent upon the pool. Maybe truly more people did not have any interaction with fire and EMS. So truly they had no opinion, which is driving a slight decline. Nothing big, which I will show you this trend. I cannot point out enough. Dissatisfaction 
and then we're gone above the flat line as you can get. It's right? almost, <laughs> yes, as close to zero percent as you could ever hope for. Um, and then the only other thing I want to point out is this is essentially the same story every year, but uh, residents over the age of 50 are more satisfied, which just may indicate they have more interaction. <laughs> um, fire and EMS response time. So this was a question added in 2022. We did not have anything related to response time. So um, good. Again, residents responded that they are very satisfied. So almost 67%, just under 67% said they're satisfied with the response time. And you can see, again, satisfaction, super low, super, super low. And you can see actually for this question, more people ended up in your, in your don't knows. Can you show the demographics of that um, one, please? Universal. <laughs> Universally high. Everybody loves fire. <laughs> Slightly lower. And then age again. So again, this trends with age in terms of satisfaction kind of across the board. And then same. So actually those who've been here for 30 years or more are more satisfied. And then just quickly on the map just to show you you can help with that. Satisfaction is actually highest in the West State. So it's like I said, universally high throughout the city. It is universally high. And in terms of response time, it is higher. You have the change by the So that went up 2.8%. Uh, slightly. This is one of the good news story where um, the neutral, there is a change in neutral actually. So people who responded neutrally last year have moved into having an opinion, positive opinion. Yeah. <clears throat> so I would give kudos <laughs> to our recycling and waste collection team because recycling and waste collection responses this year are up again. I think last year we said they were at their high. There's a new high. <laughs> so all of the great work that's being done, it's just recycling. I'm not going to go through this, but um, residents are very satisfied with recycling services. Um, if we look at the change year over year, just ignore that slightly up, but it has gone up in every every area of the city. So people are more satisfied with recycling services, and I have to show you waste collection. Look at that on the back. <laughs> they overtook fire. Yes. This is the first wow. time satisfaction. <laughs> <laughs> um, it is higher than fire, which is that's me. Um, I, and the thing here, the the difference here, you can see there are few people, few few people who said don't know. So a lot of people have a touch point with waste collection. So this is excellent, 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 excellent. So those people who responded are really satisfied. I'm not sure the fire chief. <laughs> <laughs> Good news story. Okay. And then quality and condition of housing. So this question is asking how satisfied one is with the quality and condition of housing in their neighborhood. Um, results ever so slightly down, but they are almost the same as last year. Um, I will point out, I'm going to hop down to the trend. So you can kind of see last year where it kind of converged a little bit and then it is starting. Dissatisfaction is starting. I hope so slightly. It's down a little bit. Not enough to say a trend. This is within that margin of error. So this is one. We will want to see a trend two years, three years, especially a lot of the work that's being done with the DRP. You should keep an eye on this going forward to see how this changes. So dissatisfaction, there are about a third of the people who are dissatisfied. So this is one of my eyes. 
And then quickly on the demographic side, just in terms of race, it is lower for Dayton's minority residents in terms of satisfaction with the quality and condition. Uh, no, I'm waiting just the last, these last two. I wanted to run. Yeah, so I'm not going to talk these through in detail, but we did add in <laughs> the sustainability question. So we'll just briefly. So we asked twofold how important do you think sustainability efforts are? Um, and a lot of residents said yes. <laughs> a lot of residents said yes. So that was the first part. Second part was. How satisfied are you with the efforts? Um, and just about 30% said satisfied. So if you see in the results, a lot of people ended up in that neutral. Could be a messaging thing, could just be they don't know what we're doing, like what's going on. So I know Meg's doing great work. I'll get the messaging out this good. way. These ones are new. We'll get in close the time. So I'm gonna click around to the Okay, so one of the ones I wanted to talk through. So we ask residents how confident they are in the purity and cleanliness of water, of state tap water. Um, this, in terms of confidence, so those who responded that they were very confident or somewhat confident, it has gone down. So one of the things we discuss when we talk this through with the directors, um, if you look at it too in terms of trend, unconfident, someone saying they were unconfident, that has actually gone up. Some of this could be around that PFOS discussion that's been kind of prevalent. Um, so not necessarily a surprise that the confidence has gone down. I think this is some of that PFOS stuff that's been in the news. So, this is one we might continue to see this kind of converge in terms of people being a little more unconfident. And then streets and sidewalks, if we talk through everything. So, Hold on. <laughs> so, yes, this satisfaction remains high. Um, newer residents said they were satisfied, but I want to point out. So, um, this is dissatisfaction. You can see it on the top. Um, dissatisfaction has been kind of, it has started to, starting in kind of like 2019 to 2021. It has started, starting to get that decline. <laughs> little by little, it is starting to decline. Um, and as we know, a lot of the work that's been done with the resurfacing is in residential neighborhoods. So there's probably still some of that. We don't separate it out in the survey. It's just streets overall. A lot of that could be interpretation of what you think is a street, what you see in front of you, what you drive on every day. Um, so this is one. It's work in progress. <laughs> when this is actually, it's trending in the right direction, at least dissatisfaction is going down. Um, but this is what in terms of this is not giving us the whole picture in terms of response. This is a question that, or this is where we also are talking about breaking out and bringing a second question in. Because if you read through the qualitative comments, all of them talk about corridor, condition of corridors, right? So we know the corridors are really overshadowing this. And so we're going to try and break this out um, so that we can see a little bit more detail behind this ne for next year's survey. Okay, and I want to make sure I give enough time. Um, so I'm not going to really talk through corporate services. These are more of our internal facing things. Um, so some good news there for you to click through when the survey is available, but I wanted to make sure I had time to go back to the, the results. Well, quickly, what we wanted to do is show you a few slides. I'm not going to be able to talk about all of these and all the changes, but at least you know it's there and you can look at it later at your own your own time. What we try to do here is to have some benchmarks that show your results compared to your results are in the dark. It's actually dark blue. Uh, the light blue is an average of similar communities. So we worked with your staff to identify a number of cities that were similar in size and demographics that would be applicable. And then we have a national average. And you can kind of tell some of the changes here, or not changes, but how the comparisons here. Uh, we talked before about fire medical services. Yes, it's very high, um, but slightly lower than the average of similar communities, whereas your waste collection services, look at the difference between your rating of 78.8% and nationwide 55%. That's a dramatic 
dramatic difference in the positive, as is wastewater services and some of these others you can see. So you're about on par or you're better, uh, higher rated than um, comparisons of most of those options. Next slide. Again, a few more different uh, different services. If you feel for it, again, we're not going to talk about all of those. Um, when you get into cities, more urban areas, you're going to see the mowing and trimming along city streets and other public areas generally kind of lagging behind. You can see how the national averages um, go over that. Well, they may not have the same challenges that you do in terms of infrastructure. So really what we wanted to do is end the presentation with this and, and see if it's in context. Asked you how satisfied are you with streets, and you said fifty percent. We said how satisfied are you with uh, with park? Eight percent. But then we looked at the averages, and we said, well, the average satisfaction for parks is actually ninety five percent, and the average for streets is thirty percent. That would give you a different a different kind of way to view that data, and you would you would say, oh, okay, well, maybe what I thought was a priority isn't necessarily a priority because of the context of benchmarking that we just talked about. But what this is doing is it's combining how important is something with how satisfied are you with it? So let's say in the abstract we asked you, uh, how satisfied are you with dog parks in town? Maybe there's only one dog park and it's heavily utilized and you're really not satisfied with dog parks. But we also say, well, how important is it to you? And you go, well, I don't really care about them. <laughs> You know, but that's a different view. You as a, as elected officials are going to say, okay, we're not necessarily going to chase every issue where people are dissatisfied. We want to find those issues that the public is dissatisfied, but also is the most important to them. That's really where we want to be making our investments. So what you see here when we, when we, uh, run our algorithm, looking at these different, uh, services, the list of them, there's, I believe there's 15 different items listed here. You can see what rose to the top, probably not a surprise, is the condition of streets, pavement and sidewalks, enforcement of city codes and ordinances. If you follow across and you look at the, the rankings, they're one and two. The satisfaction rankings are next to bottom and last. But what might surprise you a little bit is the third highest category of service to your residents is police services. Not necessarily because they're dissatisfied. In fact, it, the satisfaction rank was six out of 15. But what you do see is, in terms of importance, it's the third highest rating. And it's actually tied with enforcement of city codes and ordinances in terms of the most important. What does that mean? It means that your citizens are pretty happy with the police services, but they don't want you to back off on that. They don't want to lose focus on that. You need to continue, and they realize that that's something that should still, even though you know we don't want to be comfortable with our own results and all of a sudden back off of, of that. And you have other median priorities and low priorities. Just because it's a median priority doesn't mean it's not important for you to look at. But um, that's really what we, you know, what we think is the most valuable way to kind of compare that. And we do have you compare it to the twenty two the twenty twenty two important satisfaction rankings. You can see very similar in terms of placement uh, of these different items where they fall. There's a couple that might switch one place, um, one ranking place, but that's about it. Yeah, I think that's really the important thing to highlight. In terms of last year's results, when we did this important satisfaction ranking, that last column, it is almost aligned in terms of where residents ranked and satisfied, uh, ranked their importance of issues and satisfaction with issues. They are almost dead the same. <laughs> and and I, would, I would say that's probably not to anybody's surprise. In one year, you're not going to expect those to change a lot. But I have worked with communities who had some of these similar items at the top, and they have seen uh, <coughs> the streets, pavements, and sidewalks almost drop off the list of the high priorities and, and into the, the medium priorities or even the low priorities. So it is possible to address those, but it does, as we talked about before, there's a there's that perception lag. A lot of times you're you're on the right track, you're investing in the right things, but there's a takes a while for the word to get out to people to that be absorbed and reflected in their opinions. Because they're still thinking about a road that you, the city promised they were going to do 20 years ago, and they haven't really given you the benefit of the doubt on that and looked at other items where you have made strides and improvements. So there's that that lag. 
And that's all we have. Okay. Well, Before we uh, go to questions, the survey link will be live on the website tomorrow morning. It's almost after hours. So we'll post it. Um, it's actually a management and budget page on the city website. There's a link in the left-hand side to the date survey. Thank you to all the dashboards. So it'll be live and available tomorrow morning. Uh, are there any questions? Okay. Questions, Commissioners? Mr. Charles Um, Just one very short question. Mm -hmm. oh, thank you, Ms. Jackson. 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 Thank you, I'm going to wait a the end of this. Thank you. Um, I'm going to start using the same calendar. I'm going to start to make the response. 13,000%. 13, 13, about 13,000% 13, as well. Yeah. We typically get about a 10% response rate. Yeah. Thank you. Is that it? Okay. Let's stretch out. Oh, sorry. Um. I want to thank you for the inclusion of the benchmark data. So we're glad to see that. Um, is this the totality of it? Will there be more on the um oh, the benchmarking? Yeah. Um we typically didn't do a lot. We um you'll see it in the there'll be a few more in the report. Um, but there's not a whole lot. We do like to benchmark against ourselves. <laughs> That's what we find really important here year. But there's a couple more areas because what's included in here is like city services. And neighborhood, but there's a couple other areas like um, I think satisfaction with you know your neighborhood, which we didn't include, all that kind of stuff. There'll be a couple more. I think it's about five more we included. When you say benchmark against ourselves, can you say a little bit more when you say that with what you're looking at? Yeah, I think it's when we look at that year over year trend and five, six year trend is really what we look for just to see if we've had those ups and downs, because that's really where we have seen that we've moved the needle or maybe something is not working how it should and the satisfaction has gone down. Which I think is, as I was alluding to, the year over year bumps, maybe not as important, but if we see this like year long trend, six year trend of it going down, that's where we kind of maybe need to refocus or realign or something. That's what we should look for. In our own data. Yes. That, that, right, that's right. the purest form because we've got our citizens telling us year over year. Yeah, right. And we don't know how the the citizens in Fort Wayne compare directly to the citizen. I mean, we can do a benchmark, but this is the survey is always meant to benchmark our performance with our right. residents, right? Do we have any items where the change has been greater than out? I mean, it seems like most of the changes I've seen have been fluctuation within the margin of error. I'm curious if there's been any ones where we can point to and say, this is a item where the, the needle the move. Up or down? I think yeah. the one that we talked through, acceptance of immigrants, that has, and maybe that's some of the national sentiment, you can see from when we introduced the question, it has gone down. Now, we don't know exactly what's driving that. That would require more data digging, but that would be a place to say there is a significant change. Um, that would be one of the areas you would probably want to look at. Yeah. And then the one other one is the um, satisfaction with the uh, quality of water, um, where we saw a five percentage point decline from last year. But that is also, as Jeanette talked about earlier, aligns with what's going on in the news nationwide. I mean, I noticed in the recycling, there was that real, that dip. that seemed to be, was that back when we had the oops cards? Didn't that create quite a bit of... Uh, it was right around COVID, too, when a lot of people were home using yeah. the services, so <laughs> there was probably more opinion Good. on the services as well, so, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm pretty much got I mean, it's pretty much jive with what I was thinking about. Let me ask you a question, though. This is only households, right? There are no businesses. So okay. Yeah. That's household. Yeah, but I, I'm, if I'm wrong, <laughs> what we procure, or ATC Institute procures um, addresses from USPS on residences. So whether it's a rental property or um, a home, something like that. Oh, sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then this kind of validates what we have always heard, especially on the campaign trail. It's the communications. 
we, we didn't know you were doing that. It's the hardest thing to. It's, it's the hardest good. thing that affects what you're saying. So that's all I have. Thanks. Yeah, that was uh, in line with the question I was going to ask uh, relative to the places or parts of the community or neighborhoods where we have made significant uh, investments. It's obvious, like uh, here in down Jacob Home, for example, uh, 15 streets, or the aspect of a new, you know, uh, facilities being uh, being built in those spaces as well. Are you seeing any correlation to what's happening there versus those particular activities? Yeah, I will say in some of the responses, especially once you start digging. Um, so a lot of the work with the DRP is to address issues in areas that have historically been unaddressed, right? So some places, um, responses have gone down in some areas like some Eastern neighborhoods where they might not feel as touched, right? So you'll probably see that well, hopefully ebb and flow over time, but you might see in terms of where the investment's going, that's where you'll see that big year over year change. And then it might kind of decline here where people might not feel as touched or might not see, it might be a communication thing as well. Might not know what's going on in their neighborhoods. So if we uh, made some uh, investment in a particular neighborhood and it showed up on the, you know, the radar, if you will, uh, this year, and even though we may have picked some things, made some things happen good, for example, in 22, but we moved on to another neighborhood in 23, are they going to ding us because we're not making investments in that neighborhood anymore? And that's why I think it's really important to look at that multi-year, right. those year-to-year thing. It's going to be all over the place, year-to-year. Like, it's really hard to trust one year's results in the prior year. It's that that truly the overall decline over a five, six-year period. Yeah. And, and I, then there's... I think I'm sorry. Then there's also that anomaly of uh, what the city manager talked about with the street paving. Um, right. We're asking the question about just paving in general. Then um, they're not going to distinguish between uh, the residential streets and the thoroughfares. So. What's up, that with Alex? Yes. Alex, yes. Right. Okay. I was just going to say it might also be useful to look at other metrics that you can uh, infer from in terms of whether that investment has been effective. So some of the efforts that you're saying where you, you spotlighted a certain area, you've torn down some properties, you've, you've made an effort there. Uh, one of the things that a sign of success of that is not just perception of the neighborhood, but are you encouraging additional private investment? Are other neighbors seeing that and using that <laughs> kind of that, that corner, corner lot effect? You invest in a neighborhood, the best place is a corner lot because that's most people, most traffic goes by. And are you encouraging them? And, and that just might just be uh, pulling data if you're not already from your um, community development department for permits and, and seeing that's something you can tout in your neighborhood communications. Not only did the city spend this, but we've encouraged twofold or threefold private investment in that same neighborhood just to make sure people understand that. I like that. <clears throat> okay. Uh, no more questions? Uh, we're good. Uh, so your assessment is, is good, right? We are, we're moving in the right direction. Okay. I like to hear that. <laughs> you can't say that enough. Thanks. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.